two guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Chuck on Score North and scorenorth.com. Reckless speculation. Reckless speculation. Hello and welcome to a Reckless Speculation Thursday edition of Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd. We got our guy Darren Doogie Wilson from the 5 Eyewitness News Sports Department in the house. We got more Wolves ownership drama to get to. But uh, Doogie, you've been all over this Jaden Daniels Vikings thing the last couple weeks. Where Why why, why have they met with Bo Nix and Eugene? Why did they meet with Drake May and Chapel Hill? Why not swing down and meet with Jaden Daniels? So let's, let's start Vikings. Let us know uh, the latest on Vikings and Jaden Daniels, if you could. All right, Phil. Happy Reckless Speculation Thursday. Judd, what is in that mug of yours? Is it coffee? Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Black coffee. Very nice. Declan? Uh, Nespresso. Nespresso. Oh, all right. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, classy. Classy guy. Woodbury now. have gotten to him already. Look at him. Big time. All right. This is what happens. Next Thursday. April 18th, in Louisiana, the Vikings, Kevin O'Connell, Quasi Adolfo Mensa, others with the Vikings, will connect with Jaden Daniels for a private workout slash interview. So it's on. Like, by next Thursday night, or heck, let's be safe, by one week from tomorrow, the Vikings will literally have the book on all these guys, certainly the top five. Right? I mean, Caleb Williams, we know he's going one. Take him off the board. The next five guys, the Vikings will have every question answered. Doesn't guarantee anything 100%, but they will have every piece of information they need to make the best possible decision. And hey, that homework began. I don't know if we've hammered this enough. That homework began two years ago. Heck, two plus years ago. Yes, it has ramped up. Since January, down in Mobile, spending time with Penix Jr., with Knicks, into pro days, into the combine, then pro days. I get all that, right? The last few months, more of a microscope. But the Vikings' homework, including Kwesi seeing these guys in person multiple times, and not only like seeing them in games, but also at practices, talking to a lot of people. The Vikings have pinpointed this quarterback draft class for a long time. They are fully prepared to make a very smart decision. I think that's what I like the most. It feels like, and and to your point, Dukes, you can never like 100% get guarantee that one, you're going to trade up or two, you're going to get this right. But it feels like everything that's been reported about the process is a play by play of, if you're a fan of the team, what you should want, right? Like nothing's being left to, to chance they they have they feel as if from uh from the front office on down they were completely prepared for if Kirk did leave to really have a great idea about this class and i think as a fan that is about all that you can hope for is that one it's the right people in place making the call but two what's your process what's the vetting it feels like the vetting here has been really really thorough yes i mean i can't Now, I get it. Like, I'm knee-deep in Viking stuff. I'm not chasing all sorts of commander's info or Patriots info. I understand that. But from what I can gather, there is not another organization doing these deep dives like the Vikings. Like, I'm not aware of the commanders, the Patriots, the Raiders, the Broncos going to locations with all five of these guys, putting them through thorough workouts. Nothing that's scripted in a pro day, but being able to, you know, stand there on the field dictating exactly what they do. The Vikings have done an excellent job this pre-draft process. Hey, can you tell us more just about the Josh McCown factor in all of this? You know, he's been deployed on a bunch of different pro days, all these different private workouts. He comes in really fresh from the NFL. You know, he's not that recently retired. He's got a background with Drake May. It kind of feels like this secret weapon that they've hired here that's an extension of Kevin O'Connell. And yeah, he's the he's the co-quarterbacks coach, but like he seems to be maybe the third most influential voice in this room if we assume that KOC and Quasi are the top two. 
I would agree. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I mean, you know, like think about like he was in Carolina last year, right? Refresh my memory if I'm wrong on that. But yeah, you know, going through that pre-draft process where they ultimately settled on Bryce Young. Yes, his deep knowledge of Drake May from their time together, you know, working at that high school in North Carolina. Heck, his knowledge with Sam Darnold, right? When they were teammates with the Jets, right? I mean, Sam is going to start week one unless something unforeseen changes. Like Sam Darnold is the guy, at least early in the season, before some sort of shift happens, whether it's midseason, late in the season, or heck, maybe it's 2025 if all goes well with Sam Darnold, right? So Josh was heavily involved in that decision-making process. So yes, like to me, it's not even close, right? Like if you're ranking, okay, like we can debate if Quasey's one or Kevin's one. To me, like Quasey's not taking a quarterback that Kevin isn't all in on. So to me, like I put Kevin above Quasey, but if you want to put them on the same line, that's fine. Josh McCown absolutely is that next guy. It's not even close. I get it. Jamal Stevenson, others have their fingerprints all over the right. entire draft class, right? The scouts, others, right? There are influential people over in Egan, heck, scattered across the country. They don't even really spend much time in Egan. All these scouts, all these people, right? But yes, without a doubt, Phil, Josh McCown, number three on that list. So I, I think the hope, uh, for simplicity's sake, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, Dukes, was, was that th there might be a, a well-before-pre-draft trade, right? Like with the Cardinals at four. So you lock into four, and by draft night, it's like, okay, we're going to get one of the these guys. That does not look possible now. Uh, my guess is that two weeks from today, we are going to see very well, potentially, that night a trade made, or if nothing else, that day. Um, but we are reminded again, because it started now, too, we are entering the two-week absolute silly season of this entire draft. We're starting to see reports about, I love this guy. No, this guy sucks. We are on the precipice of a beer bong picture. We are on the precipice <laughs> no, a of... A beer bong picture doesn't drop you in the draft, dope, does? I think it shoots you up the stock, person. I agree with that. Yeah, this guy knows how to bar, party. Like, a Think about bond. Josh Rosen in the hot tub, right? Yeah, I mean, well, I was going to say, like, I tweeted up, that today. Thumbs down. Stud. I tweeted yeah. that today. We're yeah. on the Thorough precipice bread. of a hot tub. We are on the precipice of a Drake May when he, he was 12 with some, you know, crude tweet. So, like, that's what we – so so my advice, Dukes, is for the next two weeks, duck. Because anything that you see has to be taken now with a grain of salt – and that's why I think the Vikings pre-draft preparation process becomes so important because the one group of people that you don't want to be affected by this crap is the team that you follow. And I and the Vikings are giving themselves a real chance. So if something comes out, something leaks, the Vikings know, hey, we knew about that. It's well, I, either a problem or it's not a problem. Real quick, real quick. The only I feel like the only quarterback of the top six that hasn't caught major strays is J.J. McCarthy. Everybody else, like Bo Nix, he's, he, he's, he, he's the, he's the uh, Van Wilder of college football quarterbacks, right? Van Michael Wilder. Penix, he's got uh, Forrest Gump prosthetic, uh, like the knee braces, right? Drake May is getting killed right now. Drake May is getting absolutely destroyed in this process. I mean, Jaden Daniels hasn't caught many, I guess. I, I would say J.J. Yeah. McCarthy and Jaden Daniels are like the cleanest in terms of criticism so far in the lead-up. Caleb Williams... You know, look at his phone case, his nails. He now he's like chirping on Twitter at uh, is it was it Greg McElroy, whoever. Um, I don't know. It it what I want to know what the dirt is on Jaden Daniels and JJ McCarthy. Okay, they can't be that squeaky clean. Well, I mean, I haven't heard any sort of dirt on either of those two. But frankly, I mean, I haven't heard like like all this dirt on on Drake May. I mean, I get it. As you watch the film a bit more, I mean, I saw Brian Baldinger on NFL Network last night, yep. you know, with the microscope on on the Clemson and North Carolina State games last year where Drake didn't play particularly well, right? But with the right coaching and all that, I mean, mm -hmm. there's still a belief that, that Drake has a high ceiling. I'll continue, like, I'll die on this hill. That, like, my stance from a few weeks ago isn't changing regardless of what comes out the next couple weeks. Now, maybe subject to change a little bit, if I get some intel that somehow next Thursday with Jaden Daniels somehow goes sideways, I don't anticipate that happening. But like my understanding is the Vikings would be plenty happy with any of Jaden Daniels, Drake May, J.J. McCarthy. 
I really think it'll be one of those three. I get it doing your due diligence on Bo Nix, on Michael Penix Jr., that there are scenarios where maybe the Vikings can't move up, right? I get it. Like, the buzz right now is Washington isn't moving off two. Yeah. Like, I don't know that for sure, but, okay, Washington locked in at two. I happen to think Jaden Daniels goes pick two, that the Vikings aren't going to have a prayer of touching, of landing Jaden Daniels. What is New England going to do at three? I know Adam Schefter earlier this week suggested the steam is right now. New England isn't moving off pick three. All right, so who do they prefer? If Daniels goes two, do they go May or McCarthy? Are they going quarterback for sure at pick three? So I understand it that the Vikings may not even have a shot at landing one of those three, but I really believe they are going to end up with one of those three that whether it's Arizona at four or the Chargers at five, whichever of the three end up falling, that the Vikings will get their hands on one of those guys, that the Vikings are plenty happy with any of those three. And I get it. I am sure. I don't have this knowledge. I don't think anybody in my position has this knowledge of who the Vikings prefer among Daniels, McCarthy, May. I don't know that, okay? Let me make that very clear. I don't think yeah. anybody knows. But I'm sure they prefer one of those three. But I'm just telling you, my sense going back weeks, and I'm not changing this stance, is the Vikings have a healthy opinion of all three of those guys that there would be happiness landing any of those three. One last thing on Jaden Daniels here for a second. Don't you think it's interesting? You know, Washington pretty much has the the next slotted pick. Washington's on the clock right now. If we believe the the Bears have already selected Caleb Williams, I think that's fair. Yeah. If they if they are going to draft Jaden Daniels, wouldn't Jaden Daniels just shut down any other visits? Like if they had an agreement, hey, just so you know, Jaden, we love you. We're taking you. To me, the fact that Jaden Daniels is taking a private workout with the Vikings means there's still some uncertainty as to who's picking number two and or what the commanders are going to do at number two, right? And or that Jaden Daniels has all sorts of interest in being a Viking. Maybe he forces like, his I way really down the that. ladder. Yeah, I'm just telling you, not that he has control over that, maybe to some extent, but yeah, okay. not much. But Jaden Daniels, okay. okay, maybe this falls under the reckless speculation umbrella. Here, we'll, we'll, hey, here, we'll, 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 we'll make it safe. It's Thursday. I think Jaden would be okay landing, too, with Washington. I really believe that. But if Jaden Daniels could pick any of these situations, I'm just telling you, my belief is he would pick the Vikings. Yeah. All What's, of those quarterbacks should pick the Vikings. Maybe. And I'm not there. Like, I don't have as much intel McCarthy and May. That's very possible with both of those guys. But I'm just telling you, on Daniels, my belief is if he could pick any of these situations, it would be the Vikings. It behooves the commanders, though, to have Daniels meet with – the Vikings, because in addition to not knowing what the Vikings draft board says, we don't know what they what the potential trade could be. Like, like we're assuming we're all like, you shouldn't give up your 25 first. And some of us are like, well, if, if it's the right quarterback, you should. But we have no idea. It could go deeper than that. Like, we don't know. They they could give up an absolute what we consider to be a crazy ransom to get to two. So, like, if I'm the commanders, I want you to meet with with that, that guy. Cause if you're gonna call me on Friday. And offer me, uh, you know, 11 23, a 2025 first, and a 2026 second or something. And Justin Jefferson. And, and Justin, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, like, that's the thing. We all, the dangerous thing, right? I think we can all say the Vikings want to draft a QB and not be like out on a limb whatsoever, right? But Doogie, after that, we got no clue. Yeah, I agree. And like, if you're Adam Peters in Washington, why would you make any sort of guarantee to anyone, right? Two weeks out. Or even a week out. Like, to me, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, like, Jaden Daniels somehow is going to get hurt next Thursday in his workout with the Vikings. I mean, come on. That's well, not that happening. It's, it's the Vikings, dude. Don't discount it. <laughs> I'm you just saying. Back to, <laughs> why me? Why if you're the commander's me? front office. Why me? Yeah, there's no negative. Because you don't know in the end right. what the Vikings could potentially offer. If it's such a sweetheart offer mm -hmm. that you're willing to... To say yes, like you have to, you have to weigh out every potential scenario. There is a scenario, as crazy as it sounds, that the Vikings put, yeah, the 25 first round pick, multiple other picks, whatever it is, to go from 11 to two. That Adam Peters in the end will have to say, okay, this is just too much, yeah. right? Like I don't care, you know, what the draft chart says. If I'm winning, whatever, like just eye test. Like if they're giving me all of this, okay, I'm moving backwards. To 11, I've got so much ammo, I'll move up from 11 to wherever to get to four or three or five or whatever it might be. So, yes, like 
to me, like it makes no sense whatsoever for Washington at pick two to make any sort of guarantee. It just doesn't. Can we transition to this crazy Timberwolves ownership saga for a moment? If you want to. Yeah. Okay. So Glenn Taylor comes out. I shouldn't say that. Woj comes out with a report that clearly came from either another NBA owner or he got his hands on the budget or one of the budgets. I don't know if there were multiple budgets submitted by A-Rod and Lori, but it was part of a budget submitted for, hey, you guys are going to be majority owners. Can you run a business? Can we get a can we get a PL here? Can we get a little something? And so uh Woj reports that A-Rod and Lori submitted a budget with a drastically reduced payroll for next year to get under the luxury tax. So what we have here, Doogie, is to sum up the last two weeks, Glenn Taylor is adamant that Lori and A-Rod missed a benchmark somewhere over the course of the last two years and also is of the belief that these guys are going to be house poor owners. But then on the other side, Lori and A-Rod are adamant that they've hit every necessary legal benchmark for this transaction and they will spend whatever it takes to put a championship team on the court. They will spare no expense. (sighs) What do you make of the latest here, Dukes? Well, and in Mark and Alex's defense... Like, Tim Connolly, I stressed this in the moment, so this isn't breaking news here, right? But, like, Glenn Taylor wasn't hiring Tim Connolly. Yeah. That was Mark and, to some extent, Alex. But that party, right? They led the bus on Tim Connolly leaving Denver to come here. They very much, I take them at face value, when they volunteer, that they were pushing, hey, let's go get Rudy Gobert, right? Now, Yeah, was there some apprehension from Glenn? Sure, but he's had apprehension on many moves going back many years where in the end he just says, okay, I want my opinion heard, but like even though I'm the owner, I'm not vetoing this trade, okay? So like, let me make that clear. It's not like Glenn was like, no, right? Like if Glenn was that adamant, the Rudy Gobert trade doesn't happen. But Mark and Alex had a lot to do with that trade. Mark and Alex helped to prove the Jaden McDaniels extension. They helped to prove the Mike Conley Jr. extension. Hey, on Friday, March 29th, when I spoke with Mark and Alex, Mark said, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm in a better financial situation today than I've ever been. But yes, then you've got the Glenn Taylor side <laughs> suggesting what they've suggested. To me, the documents, Judd, you reminded me a couple weeks ago, right? Let's say it again. The documents never lie. There is documentation of Mark and Alex submitting to the Carlisle Group, to the NBA, to Glenn Taylor, some sort of budget layout for the 24-25 season. I now need to get my hands on that documentation. I want to see what is written there. What vision do they have? I'll also say there's fluidity. Phil, what if they lose in the first round of the playoffs? Right? It's possible. Mm -hmm. I think... They're fully capable of making a run. Heck, I think they're good enough to win the Western Conference. I thought last night for three quarters, they were really, really good. But then they imploded in the fourth. I'm just saying, if they match up with Phoenix or New Orleans, we've laid out those are not great matchups. Even though the Wolves have home court, the Wolves probably should beat the Suns or the Pelicans. But let's say they lose in the first round to Phoenix or New Orleans. Do you think Glenn Taylor is going to say, yeah, let's keep this core together. Let's be a second apron team. Yes, I'll pay the luxury tax. Now, Glenn has paid the luxury tax multiple times. All right. So he's done that, but there's been many years where he hasn't. You know why he hasn't? Because the roster stunk. The roster wasn't capable. No owner on the planet would pay the luxury tax for a roster that isn't capable of winning a playoff series. So I'm just saying there is fluidity. Yeah. You know, even if Glenn is saying, or his camp, or, you know, however you want to term it, that, hey, Mark and Alex are trying to cut payroll for next year. Glenn may cut payroll. Let's see how the rest of the season plays out. But I'm telling you, I need to track down this documentation because it clearly exists. So it's good that, and or I get why the leak came out and told both groups to shut up publicly. Like, well, they did. Yeah, quit going to Doogie. Pretty more calling Doogie all the time. Leave Doogie alone. I get that. But, but, but here's the problem. The problem is this, that never really works. So, so instead of, instead of them mudslinging on the record where we can at least document who said what, 
They're now going to mudsling in what's going to become a really brutal divorce off the record. So like we're going to get these things to be to be truthful right now if I was advising fans on on this Patience. assume everyone's lying too. Like like everyone's That's spinning yeah. they're all spinning their truth. Because what you just said about Glenn might be a thousand percent right, but but that's a hot spot, right? These guys were going to come in and they were going to cut payroll. They were going to screw that this team, and you know, everybody. I I just hope ha having seen the North Stars move, the Vikings have had numerous things that got ugly just like this. I just hope in the end the team and the fan base and the situation here ends up okay because. Having seen this before, my greatest fear is this can go both ways. One, it can end up stable. It can end up fine. A new group comes in. But the other one is that this, you know, this continues and continues and the end result can be really bad. I just hope the fans win here because that to me is the biggest concern. Not, not the rich groups that are going to fight about who's got more or who was right. Amen. Hey, don't forget about the twins, right? The portable stadium, Chris yeah. Clauser. Nearly ending up in North Carolina, right? We've yeah, seen a yeah. lot of drama here in the Twin Cities going back multiple decades. Like, you know, we've all been in this market for a long time. So we've seen a lot. Could you imagine being the mediator in this process? Now, I don't officially know when the mediation will start, but let's be frank. The mediation isn't going to get anywhere. So then it'll get to an arbiter, an arbitration situation. Okay, you know, which side does the arbitrator, the arbiter, side on? Who knows, right? But then... In the end, let's not forget, the NBA still needs to ultimately approve. Let's right. say, because I've seen, right. speaking of documentation, I have seen the 47-page uh, document, the sale agreement, right? Mark and Alex with Glenn. It was in a court hearing back in 2021. It's online. Anybody can track it down. I checked, and I'm told there were no changes along the way because I was curious, okay, 2021, but this thing could have been rewritten. I was told... That it wasn't. So what's online from 2021, 47-page documentation, is the agreement Mark and Alex with Glenn. If you go through that documentation, if you're bored, go through all 47 pages. I get it. Mark and Alex <laughs> have a good case, okay? But I'm just saying, even if an arbiter sides with them on that part of it, yeah. I'm telling you, it's still going to be a process to ultimately have the NBA agree to make Mark and Alex the majority owners. Yeah. It's, I'm so torn on this because, I mean, you guys know where I stand. I just, Glenn Taylor, the best thing you can say about him as an NBA owner is he's kept the Wolves in Minnesota, which is a, a pretty low bar. Like, it's a top 15 media market. The NBA wants a team in Minnesota. I mean, Glenn has protected the Timberwolves from maybe being bought uh, by somebody that will move the team. So I get that. But I don't want him. I want a solution to the Glenn Taylor problem long term here. But I don't know if Mark and Alex are the right successors. So I don't, it's hard to even pick a side here to Judd's point. Everyone's putting out their version and, and their best version of, of what they think is happening here. And I guess we just have to sort of sit back and let legal people let us know who's right and who's wrong. But man, I mean, this is to life. me, is it nuts to suggest best case is there is some third party out there? that will keep the team here in Minnesota. Yes, the arena, there has to be a solution there. Yeah. Also, simultaneously, it would be great, I guess, best case scenario, because I think we're still years off, but that the NBA announces we are expanding. Expansion teams, Las Vegas, Seattle. Owners, get ready. Those expansion checks are going to be large, right? Because as long as the carrot is out there for a team specifically to move to Las Vegas, I get it, right? Like, there are a lot of people that have approached Glenn saying, hey, like, yes, we're interested, but yes, we're also interested in moving the team to Las Vegas. And I get it. The NBA might say, no, Phil, yeah, 15th market. We're not leaving the soda. We have our eyes on an expansion team in Vegas. We don't want a current team moving. Also, people will say, best of luck getting out of the Target Center lease. I'll continue to say, it's not as ironclad as some people think. It would take many millions of dollars to break the Target Center lease, but a new owner, in theory, could break the Target Center lease and look to move. Would the NBA ultimately approve that? Okay, there's a lot of tentacles to that equation. But I do think Glenn deserves some credit, right? Because he has been approached as recently as a few years ago from multiple groups saying to Glenn, hey, like they were very frontal about it. 
We want to move the team. We don't want the team there in the Twin Cities. But I'm just saying, like, to me, best case scenario at this point, it's not Mark and Alex. I get it. It's not Glenn. Time for Glenn to find a successor. But it's somebody else. It's, you know, the guy who bought the Jazz. There's just – there's a guy out there, right? The guy who bought the Jazz, not interested in moving the team out of Salt Lake. Smart here, though. Like, So the hold on expansion – because like it doesn't make a lot of sense why they're not proceeding more. The hold on expansion could be a very leverage. Smart, yeah, could, leverage. yeah. So so here here's what they could do though. I could see the Wolves actually going to Seattle, and and if because if we're not going to build an arena, then guess who who becomes expansion one or two behind Vegas, us, because that's that's as as we've seen, it's the hammer, right? So, like, if you get bought by a rich guy who's like, okay, um, Climate Pledge in Seattle, brand new, absolutely gorgeous, as far as I know, designed for both hockey and basketball. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's NBA right, it, right now. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and it's now you tell us, okay, you want a team back? We'll give you a team back. But you got to build a building, and it's going to cost you just as much because there, there's no difference in, in what you would charge an expansion fee here or Seattle. My point is, like, we are going to, I fear we're going to, to get stuck in some type of high stakes game. And this crap that's proceeding right now only makes it worse because it's just a boondoggle. The other unfortunate part is, like, if somebody in the Taylor family was ready to take over the team, but we're just, we're not in that situation. So to me, it has to be a third party. Now, hey, Glenn might live for another six, seven, eight, 10, 12 years, right? But we also have to acknowledge, like, you know, last week at the Mankato basketball celebration, like he struggled on the stage. Yeah. He told me in early March he was heading down to Mayo for a, an extensive two-day checkup. He's been dealing with a back issue, legs issue. Like, mm -hmm. he's just, he'll fully say, like, yeah, my health, it's a question mark. Heck, he's 82, right? For a lot of 82-year-olds' health. Yep. is a question mark, right? But to me, it's just, it's unfortunate that there's not like some sort of succession plan in the family. Now, the blowback there, Phil, you might say no. Like Glenn, but, you know, guilt by association. I don't want anybody with the Taylor family owning the team for the next 10 or 20 years. So I understand if if that's the blowback, but we're not in that situation anyway. That's why I suggest at this point, best case may be a third party. Yeah. Hey, give us like another minute or two of rapid fire scoops here. What's left in your bag, Dukes? Yeah, so Trevor Larnick in the Fort Myers lineup tonight. He's been out with a turf toe issue, so that rehab assignment begins tonight. You think about Matt Walner's struggle. So, hey, could Larnick help the Twins lineup at some point? Something to keep an eye on with that rehab assignment starting tonight. I'm Brooks yeah. Lee, back issue. I'm told he first took the field on Monday. So there was a rest period with the back. So the rehab, you know, morning, early afternoon, that didn't ramp up until Monday of this week. So today mm -hmm. would be, what, day four of that process. Hopefully in the next seven to 14 days, he too is in the Fort Myers lineup, but we're still at least a couple weeks out from a Brooks Lee return. Caleb Thielbar, good to go. One more appearance with the Saints, but he should join the Twins this weekend in Detroit. Okay. Darren Doogie Wolfson. On a reckless speculation Thursday. How do you Great handicap stuff, the 7-8 race in the NBA, Phil? I mean, if we're thinking the Wolves are the two seed. Man. I mean, I think they're the two, Damn. although how fascinating is Sunday where Phoenix wins out here. Now, Phoenix may lose before Sunday looking at its schedule and the way they've been playing, although they won last night against a depleted Clippers team. But, like, Phoenix, if they went out, it looks to me like they can avoid the play-in. So, like, Sunday could mean all sorts of stuff for the yeah. Phoenix Suns. But, like, to me, Denver probably beats the Spurs, beats the Grizzlies, right? So, Denver yeah, is the, the one. one. Are the Wolves the two? And if they're the two, how do you handicap who the seventh seed is? It is – I mean, it's so up in the air because the, the Pelicans are a half game up on the Suns. Pelicans have three games left. Sacramento got, tonight. Like, how big of a game is that tonight for New Orleans? It's at Sacramento, at Golden State, and then home against the Lakers. And by that point, I don't – I mean, the Lakers right now are playing to get into the 7-8 game, and Correct. so are the Warriors. So, like, these teams are all playing for something right now. So, it's yes, hard to the even Lakers handicap. and Warriors can't move up to six, though. So, like, the Lakers-Warriors are locked into the play-in. But yeah. there is a difference, right? 9-10 compared to 7-8. So, yeah. yes, and you look at 
the Warriors schedule the rest of the way, to me, the most favorable of all those teams fighting to be in that 7-8 mix or even, you know, New Orleans jockeying to be six. So I'm including New Orleans Phoenix in that equation. So New Orleans Phoenix, Sacramento, Lakers, Warriors. To me, the Warriors have the most favorable remaining schedule. Plus, the Warriors are playing the best basketball yeah. of any of those teams. But I still think if you're the Wolves, it's Sacramento one, Agreed. Golden State two. Even though the Warriors are playing good ball right now, I just don't think they have the size. So if you're the Wolves, if there's a scenario where you can open up, I don't care what seed you are, you know, two, heck, if you fall to three, I don't think Sacramento's getting the six. But point is, like, if you can open up against Sacramento, that is the best possible scenario. And to me, number two would be the Warriors. Yep. No, totally agree. We'll have Jim Pete's going to be uh, fresh off nice. the plane on flagrant howls today. So Love you can it. check that out. Doogie, great stuff, and dude. Cat, like, I think Cat's in tomorrow. I mean, I don't think I'm breaking news there. You know, I know it's either going to be tomorrow or Sunday, but based on his pregame work in Denver yesterday, like signs point to Cat being on the court for the Atlanta game, not the Phoenix. Well, also the Phoenix game, but not waiting until Sunday that he seems ready to go for at least some sort of stint, limited minutes, but that he can be on the court tomorrow night. Yep. And that's good. Get a couple games before the playoffs start. Correct. All right, Dukes, yep. we got to run here. Uh, we'll do it again on Tuesday and we'll see what else pops between now and then. Sounds good, boys. Have a good one. Right. See ya. Darren Thanks, Doogie Dukes. Wolfson. Some scoops, some reckless speculation here on Minnesota sports with Mackie and Judd.